Hi, everybody. Uh, today, I've got Paul Gauger here with me, who's the Senior Vice President Americas for Visit Britain. And we're going to talk about how it's getting easier to go there. Uh, we're going to talk about a new relationship it has with an airline. Uh, what are the remaining restrictions to go there? And what's happening? Why should your clients go to Britain? All here on Insider Travel Report. Paul, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Alan. It's a pleasure. Always good to see you. Good to see you, too. So I am going to start off with what do we have to think about? Travel advisors, do they have to worry about restrictions at this time in Britain? Things are loosening up, but there's still some concern. Um, good news. Happy to say that from um, March the 18th, which was just last week, it is now fully open. There's no restrictions. Um, and that goes for vaccinated and unvaccinated. So that's for all travellers can come to, come to Britain. Um, there's no testing requirements. Of course, you still have to test when you're returning back to the US. Um, so you have to think about your country to wherever your originating country is because they may have rules and regulations that you still need to follow. So I think any advisor needs to, you know, always make sure they're across that and encourage their customers to be like that as well. But for us, um, fully open, no, no um, passenger record forms now. Everything's... We're open for business. We're welcoming everybody back with open arms. All the, you know, everything's open from theatres, you know, theatres in the West End for shopping in all the cities. And, and are, are there, for example, in the theatre, are there masking requirements? There, apparently it's up to each individual theatre. So mm -hmm. um, some theatres are, are still maybe, you know, still encouraging it, but I think a lot of it's optional. There's no, say, unlike, say, where in some, you know, in some cities where, They'll be still quite militant about the mask wearing. Um, in the UK, I think people will find that it does feel like things are back to normal. They don't have and, to wear a mask. And the pubs. I assume maybe you start off with the mask <laughs> <laughs> by the end of the yeah. evening. So, again, it's I the think discretion it, of the traveller. Yeah, I think it's the discretion of the travellers, whatever people's comfort, you know, comfort levels are. There's a lot of people, I've got friends who will say, look, you know, I want to keep on wearing the mask. And I think that's that's perfectly fine. It's up to each individual. But... You'll find when you're in Britain, it's not it's not required. The UK government's very much looking at their man, you know, a plan of living with COVID, and we've got I think it's eighty seven percent people eighty seven percent of people have had two doses, about sixty four percent have had three doses. Very good. So we're very you know we're quite big on the vaccines, and again it's it is that living with COVID. And and the return testing easy to find. Yes. Um, yes, definitely. So at the, at the moment, I think with the US, it's, you have to do it 24 hours before. But yes, that's easy, easy, to, easy to find. And even um, some are doing it at airports before. But you can actually, yeah, you, it's easy to go, you know, to get that COVID testing wherever, whatever city place you are. Probably a bit easier in the cities. So obviously London, Manchester, Edinburgh, Cardiff, all the major cities. If you're in a country area, but you can still find it. The only other thing that travel advisors might be concerned about for their clients is, uh, is there any kind of um, concern about uh, the Ukrainian situation in Russia? So we've been monitoring that first, uh, first um, where our hearts go out to the, the people of the Ukraine. Um, we're, you know, I think the whole world is watching this, this horrific situation. Um, but we've been looking into it to make sure that people feel safe and welcome when they come to Britain. And, I think you can rest, be rest assured that you, know, you can let your travel advisors can let their clients know that um, it is safe. Everyone is welcome. There's a you know there, and we're looking. We've done a little, you know just a little bit of research with tour operators as well to see if people are what people are thinking. Are people cancelling bookings at all? And at the moment, they're not. They're, I think everyone is. Everyone's sort of. It's a watching brief. Everyone's watching this space, but at the moment, um, we're not seeing any decline. And um, you know, obviously, Eastern. I think. Where people, we travel advisors, you know, there's either there's more concern with the Eastern European countries, perhaps, but I think the UK is is seen as a safe haven in that sense. Okay, let's talk about. You've got a couple campaigns I think travel advisors should be aware of. Uh, let's start with "Welcome to Another Side of Britain." Yes, "Welcome to Another Side of Britain." So that is our first campaign, our recovery campaign that, that just was just launched in um, February, and that campaign is very much city focused. So, you know, all our uh, major cities, everything from, of course, London, you know, London's the jewel of the crown, but, you know, Bath, Bristol, um, Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool, 
uh, Cardiff, Edinburgh, Glasgow. <laughs> it's all the cities because obviously the cities are the gateways to many of the countryside as well. But we knew yeah. the cities were the ones that were hurting the most, I think, after, you know, after, after, the, after COVID and all the restrictions. We needed to get people back into the cities. But we also thought, you know, it's like welcome to another side of um, Britain. It's because it's not, it's not just, you know, everyone knows lots about Britain, everyone, you know, and particularly travel advisors, probably very experienced. But we want people to think, yes, you want to see your favourites, but you also want to discover other parts. Mm -hmm. So it's other parts that you might not have known, that your clients might not know, and it's, you know, in a very, so that could be that you're showing them a different part of London, or it could be that you're showing them even a totally different city where someone might not have been to Bristol, someone might not have been to Wales in Cardiff. So we're just wanting to, you know, really to show that there's so much, it's such a small island, but there's so much on offer. Well, before the pandemic, I remember the the idea was to try, okay, you've seen the big cities, now start to delve. And and it seems like we've taken a step back uh, a little bit so that you you still cities are still the draw, and then we'll make sure you go out and look at the countryside. Exactly. Yeah, I think initially, you know, where we were booming in 2019, we were having record numbers. So pre-COVID, um, it was only like 4.5 million Americans were coming to Britain. And for us, it was like, yeah, you know our cities or you know, and so it's like actually now explore our great countryside, our coast and looking at all, all over the country. But now, you know, that was then the 29th, 2019. So now it's actually, it's all about recovery. So we need to well, get- So people- I have numbers. We, we were bring, America was bringing 5.5 billion in 2019 to the UK and uh, we're down uh, 42%. But you project, I saw some studies that uh, you'll be back fully by 2024. That's right. That's what we're aiming for. We've got, we've got some ambitious targets, but we believe we're, you know, we're going to bounce back. You know, everyone, you know, the, the travel advisors will know there's pent up demand. Everybody wants to travel. <laughs> so, and we know that um, Britain is a perennial favourite. People want to go to Scotland. They want to go to England. They want to, they want to go to Wales. So we are, but we're starting off with those cities first, again, just to get the people back. But I think, you know, that, that the, the cities are a great leapfrog. That's where you just, you know, you, jo- yeah, you can yeah. be um, in the countryside. You can be in these coastal villages. You, know, you can get down to Cornwall, you know, Devon. Um, you know, there's only like between Bath and Bristol, it's a 10-minute train ride. People just don't always realise that the distance is a, that it's so easy to get around, right, particularly right. Uh, particularly by train. Right. So uh, that's one campaign. And, and we're talking about how easy it is to get around. It's easier to get to uh, the UK because why? What's the uh, Meanwhile in Britain campaign? So Meanwhile in Britain (laughs) is the campaign that we've got with British Airways. So we've just entered a three-year global partnership with British Airways. And that campaign is going to, it's kicking off with the Meanwhile in Britain campaign here in the US. And again, that's about, that's probably more about experiences. So it's again, like the things that are on offer so everything, and again, so it ties into another side of Britain where it's about, but it's again, that sort of the different types of experiences. And we've actually got curators and people who are, you know, Brits who are recommending things that people could do. So there's everything from gym. Well, it's not just the, it's just, just the flight. It's the whole experience. It's oh, no, it's the whole experience. Yeah. So it's a joint partnership. It's a, like a joint marketing campaign with British Airways. So naturally, you know, the naturally as the um, British Airways is a natural partner for us. We've entered this commercial agreement and that we're wanting to then drive book, you know, drive that conversion, drive bookings, get people back to Britain um, with this particular campaign. Meanwhile, in Britain on British Airways. But I also love the fact that the moment you step on the plane, you're in Britain because it's British Airways. <laughs> exactly. You hear that, you hear that British accent and you know straight away. So, and that's where, you know, with the British Airways welcoming, you know, with their, with their flight attendants and their service. Um, yeah, it's it's that's when the, the experience starts. And now you have um, more routes from the U.S. Uh, and there's a, at least new, uh, a, one new one. Do you want to specify? Yes, yeah, so there's a um, there's a few new routes actually with a few different different carriers. But if with British Air with British Airways, obviously it's going to be um, if we're sticking with BA, it's um, Portland. So that's what that was a route that was yeah, gonna, yeah that was going to be happening back before pre pre COVID again pre pandemic. Portland was ready, but now that's going to be re, um, starting again in June. So that's great. But then um, we've got so many services all over the country. So 
For example, Virgin Atlantic is going to be doing um, a new service as well to Austin. And uh, United and, and, and JetBlue are looking at Boston. So that's coming up. So there's quite a few different different services coming up and that, that are all going to be helping, you know, helping people get to Britain from all over the country with whichever, whatever your airline of choice is. What's hot now that travel advisors should be telling their clients to get them interested, create interest to come out there? So I think 2022 is, a, is, um, is going to be like a hallmark year for us in Britain. So you may have heard it's Her Majesty's um, 70th Jubilee. year on the throne. So yeah. yeah, it's the Platinum Jubilee. And that's, you know, while that's a big four-day event in June, for us it's all throughout the year. There's going to be lots of exhibitions going on. Um, the Tower of London is doing like a huge flower garden. You know, there's Kensington Palace, there's Holyrood Palace. There's all the, you know, our royal history and heritage is enormous and, it's, and we know it's a big draw card. So we will be showcasing that. Um, but also all our perennial events, you know, things that are back. Wimbledon will be back. Um, the Chelsea Flower Show. Um, the Edinburgh Festival and Fringe. You know, the Edinburgh Festivals is their 75th anniversary this year. Mm. So, you know, all these major events. Um, there's one called Unboxed, which is all about creative Unbox. It's got an interesting title, Unboxed, <laughs> which is a creative um, festival where it's just showcasing 10 um, installations across the country. Um, so there's, that's something for, um, you know, which is showcasing um, creativity across the UK. Uh, there's lots of anniversaries for, say, Pride festivals. So, for example, it's the 50th anniversary of Pride in London. It's the 30th anniversary of Pride in Brighton. So... Um, I think it's the 10 year anniversary of the Wales Coastal Path. So we love an anniversary in Britain. There's always a hook. There's always a bit of history there. <laughs> and it's another, you know, it's a reason to go. I think, you know, people love these big events. You know, there's a, you know, and, and you know, it's just um, another opportunity to, to, to come back and experience what you love and discover, a, you know, another side of Britain, meanwhile in Britain, and, and capture um, new experiences. So those, those things are all cool, what's happening. But what about the film tourism, which, uh, you know, we love watching product that comes from the UK. What's coming up? Uh, you know, like a, film tourism, screen tourism, there's so much going on, whether it's, you know, whether you're watching it at the movies, streaming it on one of your devices, on TV. Um, so things that are coming up. So um, Downton Abbey, there's going to be a new movie. Cool. It's called Downton Abbey, The New Era. So that'll be happening in... Um, I think it's being released in May. Okay. Um, we've also got things like Bridgerton. So Bridgerton's coming up, um, I think, in late late March. So that should be being released on Netflix. Of course, there's Bridgerton tours now. People want to go. Like, I think that's the great thing about film and screen tourism is then you get bookable product. Right, and that right. product is like, so, for example, in Bath, you can now do a Bridgerton tour in mm -hmm. Bath. So people are inspired by, you know, people have watched their favourite TV shows they get inspired. They want to go to those locations. Like yeah. Highclere Castle, which is where Downton is set, is actually still a really popular destination. Like, a, and Americans love going there. <laughs> but there's also contemporary dramas as well. So it's, you know, and there's more on the, um, like it's, you know, more on the fun side. So things like there's Killing Eve. I don't know if you know Killing Eve, but that's a, uh, and that's another one. Um, there's Sex Education, which is set in Wales. Um, of course, The Crown. The Crown's another, another favourite. And there's lots of films coming out. So um, Harry Styles is going to be in one called The Policeman, which is set in Brighton. Um, so, yeah, so there's always, I think, the power of film, the power of television helps inspire um, visitors to, to, to come to Britain. And we're so lucky that there's so much, so much of that and that Americans love our, love our TV and our films. And well, let's not forget, there's classic films and classic TV that remind us. Uh, uh -huh. Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> exactly goes on and on uh, it, we really do have a kinship and so uh, yeah. and i love being able to uh visit uh britain anytime i want on my phone or my television so i'm glad <laughs> that these things are are all uh, especially the tours uh, i i know you can visit uh, 221 baker street for example yeah sherlock, sherlock holmes is a you know that's a that's a classic harry potter Harry Potter, there's still people wanting to do the Harry Potter films. Also, I did a um, Dickens walk that was tremendous. Yeah. Um, Pride and Prejudice, all the Jane Austen mm -hmm. things, for, you know, that for, like everything from Chatsworth House to, again, in Bath, you can do Jane Austen tours. Right. Um, yeah. So I think, you know, Shakespeare, you know, all the Shakespearean films, Stratford-upon-Avon, 
and that whole West Midlands area now as well, like it's um, which is where where um, a lot of you know there's the Birmingham Festival happening. So again, that whole arts, culture, film. There's you know Piggy Blinders. I don't know if some some of your viewers might watch Piggy Blinders. That's set in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. um, again, that's it's really it really puts a lot of places on the map, places mm -hmm. that people didn't realize. Well, that's. <laughs> I, really, at this point, I just want to be able to sign off and, and have you tell our travel advisors, you know, there are a lot of places their clients can go to. Why Brit? So aside from every, all, the, all those reasons, I think, again, with, it's, it's a, for, for Americans, it's very easy. I think the ease of travel to Britain from where, you know, right around the country. And then also because, again, we... Uh, Strangely, we do sort of kind of speak the same language. So, <laughs> there's a, you know, some of those accents might be difficult for both on both sides of the ponds, but generally, it's the it's the you know that language barrier really helps. Um, so we don't have to we don't have to worry about that. I think e you know the ease of you know whether it's you know train travel, whether it's getting around the country by by plane, it's all the different experiences that you have on offer. I think a lot of you know it's, for a lot of people, it's just somewhere that they love to come back and they love to come back every year. And we you know we're just looking. You know, I know the Brits have missed the Americans, and we want to. You know, we really encourage your advisors to to make those bookings and bring them bring them back to us. Well, we miss you too. <laughs> we miss Britain as well. Uh, well, thank you for speaking with us. I, I hope this uh, opens up uh, and reminds the travel advisors to start uh, looking this way. What should they do to get involved to to find out more information? Sure. So um, if they want to look on um, visitbritain.com. So visitbritain.com has a variety of information, a wealth of you know story ideas, product. So there's a lot on there. And I would encourage them to, to start there. And um, yeah, and I'm sure they'll be inspired. Well, thank you for speaking with us. And this is Alan Fine for Insider Travel Report.